Hello, my name is Jason White. Thank you for joining my presentation. Uh, this is the second time I've uh, done a presentation for the Teacher Journeys Conference. The first time was in 2017. Uh, my presentation then was called Where's My Cheese? Um, and it was based on uh, Dr. Johnson's book, Who Moved My Cheese? which is a really interesting book uh, focusing on um, the idea of change, how certain people react to it, how certain people deal with it, accept it, don't accept it. Uh, so anyway, my presentation uh, focused on the changes that I was going through at that time. Uh, the main points were professional development and career advancement. So I talked a lot about those ideas. Uh, so in this presentation, which I'm calling New Cheese, Please, uh, because it's uh, focusing on some current changes, uh, but mostly it will focus on ERT, Emergency Remote Teaching. Uh, there were, I guess, three main major changes um, that I've gone through um, this year. The first was a um, new position. Uh, I'm working now at an international college in Miyazaki. Um, I started in April. Um, also, uh, just the move to Miyazaki. I've spent um, the first decade of my time in Japan in the Hyogo Prefecture, um, working in Himeji and Osaka. Um, so um, those two changes have occurred, but of course the biggest change is the one we're all dealing with now, which is the emergency remote teaching, um, the switch to online and how we've dealt with that. So. Um, first, I'll talk about uh, my school. Um, our schedule, we started April 20th, which was sort of in the middle. I know uh, several colleagues whose schools uh, waited until after Golden Week before they began the semester. Um, some started a little earlier in April, uh, but I think uh, around the middle of April was uh, a pretty common starting time. So we began April 20th, and of course classes were online with the Zoom. So um, that was something that was uh, new for me as far as teaching. Uh, I had uh, some experience with Zoom. Uh, I finished my dissertation uh, and my PhD program. I graduated this year in May, uh, but I defended my dissertation in March, and that was done through Zoom. So I did have some small experience, but that was quite different, of course. Uh, so, as far as my specific teaching schedule, uh, one aspect of my school that's different than most is the uh, amount of classes that you're um, given. Uh, the standard lecture contract is 10 coma, um, so that would be 10 classes, or in most cases, it's five classes twice a week. Uh, but at this school, you're only given six coma per semester, and the idea is that um, you're available to the students and other faculty. It is a highly coordinated program, so you're expected to be on campus, um, regular office hours, and you're expected to meet with students, um, so there's a lot of coordination. So even though it, it sounds like, oh, only six classes, what am I going to do with my time? Um, truthfully, I've actually been busier uh, this semester than I have at any time in the past. So uh, my specific schedule was the three uh, standard English classes that we have in our language program, which is uh, English, um, which is it's ENG, um, one for the first year. It's more of a speaking class. It's, it's not called oral communication like many classes, but that's basically what it is. And then there's the reading class and the writing. So speaking, reading, writing. Those are the three basic classes. Uh, it's leveled out. Um, they take tests, the incoming students at the beginning of the semester to be put in levels. As it worked out, I had the same group for the speaking and the reading class. Uh, 
I had the second low level. We have uh, four standard levels and then we have a fifth group which is a mixed level and those are students who are in the teacher preparation um, program. So they're a little different. Their skill level is mixed. They're, um, so as far as the writing, I was given the second year students and the highest level. So it was a pretty interesting mix. So as far as the emergency remote teaching, uh, it was new to me, like most people, I think. Um, so there was certainly an adjustment period. Uh, the biggest thing was the time, um, the dealing with how long things took in a standard Zoom lesson compared to an, a face-to-face -face class. That, that was an adjustment. Um, so the tech aspect was the biggest thing. Um, as far as my specific classes, uh, reading was pretty much the same. Um, there wasn't uh, a whole lot of difference. Um, we, we were able to read our texts. Um, I put them in groups a lot for uh, paraphrase work and comprehension and vocabulary practice. Of course, the breakout rooms, um, you have to hop in and out to check on them, so that is probably the biggest deficit as opposed to in-person classes. Uh, just the time it takes and the ability to actually monitor and help out um, small groups. Um, for our reading program, we have three outside apps that we use. Uh, one is X Reading, which I think uh, many people know about. It's pretty popular, um, although it was my first time to use it. I, I'd used M Reader before in a part-time position, but never X Reading. Um, the second one is Read Theory, which I'd never heard of, but it's a, a good app where students can practice reading short, short passages and answering comprehension questions. And then we have Praxis Ed, which is our vocabulary app. Um, some teachers would use Quizlet as sort of a supplement, but um, that was their choice. But the three, uh, X Reading, Read Theory, Praxis Ed, those were required. Um, students had to do those, mostly outside of class. So again, there wasn't really a lot of change as far as the, the ERT, uh, because they were expected to do a large portion of the reading practice outside of class anyway. Uh, as far as the writing class, uh, again, I had the second year high level, so of course that was a very enjoyable class. Um, really bright mix of students, um, five or six uh, students from Korea, one from Vietnam, one from Cameroon, and then uh, the rest were Japanese, so it was a total of 21 students. Um, so writing actually had some aspects that I thought were more enjoyable or maybe easier with online teaching. Uh, for example, um, the second years, the main focus is teaching them how to uh, use citations, how to incorporate citations within their writing. Uh, in the first year, they work on academic paragraphs, um, and then in the second year, we focus on five paragraph essays, uh, and one requirement is to include citations. So for that example, um, showing uh, websites was actually easier with Zoom, uh, because just sharing a screen um, and you could flip in and out of different screens. For example, um, I showed the Purdue OWL uh, Writing Lab website quite a bit to get a specific examples, um, how to quote a Wikipedia article, how to, how to incorporate a YouTube video in your citation, web pages, things like that. And so I could uh, easily go between, say, the YouTube video that I wanted to use as an example and back to the OWL website uh, with their list and then maybe to a Word document so I could go in between and show those easily. Uh, also journaling, which I love. I'm a huge journal proponent. 
I use it in every class I can, not just writing. But um, for this specific writing class, we started every uh, session with uh, 15 minutes of journaling. And the first day was a little tricky, but once they figured out uh, how easy it was to upload the photo, um, they turned it in through our Moodle site. We use Moodle, which I think many teachers are familiar with. Uh, but once they got the hang of it, uh, it would get to the point where half or more of the class had submitted their journal um, before the time was even finished. Um, so that was very convenient and students um, learned quickly how to do that and they were very comfortable with it. Um, I made them write uh, handwriting um, in a notebook and then take a picture because I didn't want them to do journaling on a Word document. Um, that's a whole different discussion about personal philosophy of writing, um, but I, I wanted them to handwrite and then take a picture. Um, one thing that I had to learn was about uploads. Uh, the first time some students sent emails that, you know, they had two or three photos, but they could only upload one. So of course I had to learn quickly that um, there's a little adjustment when you post an assignment to Moodle. So um, you can uh, have as many uploads. And so I just got in the habit of when I post a journal assignment for each class, I make sure I had five uploads available. And no student ever needed that many, but two or three they did. So anyway, reading was uh, basically the same. Writing was in some aspects easier, uh, but then there's speaking, and speaking is the big challenge. I think many teachers uh, had this experience. Uh, it's really difficult to do speaking activities in an online ERT mode. Uh, Especially my focus is uh, using drama techniques. Uh, I'm a member of the Pi SIG and a, a huge proponent of performance and education. Um, but certain things were very difficult. Um, the role plays that are a standard part of many speaking classes were very difficult. Um, presentation is something that uh, a lot of classes, a lot of teachers use, and of course I love them too, but um, they're difficult in an ERT format. So uh, one app that I learned to use and appreciate a lot was Flipgrid. Again, it's something I'd never heard of before this semester, but uh, it's pretty user-friendly. Um, students can upload videos, they can respond to other students, um, there's a lot of uh, really beneficial aspects to Flipgrid. I won't get into them all in this presentation, but um, I highly recommend it. Um, so also, um, students could still create PowerPoints and share those, um, and then maybe do the actual presentation um, at a different time. If you were, uh, had the opportunity of in-face classes at any point, you could uh, work your schedule out that way. Uh, with my school, uh, Miyazaki was uh, pretty lucky as far as the virus. Uh, we, uh, we weren't hit hard at all at first, and actually uh, we went uh, over two months without a case. And so what happened is when June came, the school implemented this really strange sort of hybrid rolling schedule uh, where the students would come to class on certain days and then on certain days they would have online lessons. And it was rotated by grade level and the idea was that uh, each grade level would be on campus one time per week. Uh, it sounds really nice in theory but it, it worked out very strangely where um, for example, the first year students, uh, I had them three times, three classes uh, in two weeks, so three out of the four classes, I had them in person, and then I didn't see them again for over a month. 
and the uh, second year students, I saw them twice at the beginning of June and then I didn't see them until the middle of July. So it was, it was kind of strange, but in that situation, I was able to plan the presentations for my speaking class to where they, uh, they actually did it two weeks before uh, the semester uh, exam period came, which is when they would normally do their finals but I included their presentation as part of their final assessment, but they were able to do it in class um, just through some planning. So um, that's some advice, uh, just try and take advantage of those situations. Uh, so that's really all I have. Um, you know, everyone's talking about ERT and now. There's lots of uh, conferences, lots of presentations. So I don't think I have any special wisdom or magic that I can share. Um, but I would like to kind of talk about the effects uh, on me personally and what I've seen in my experience with the ERT. Uh, it's been very difficult, but um, not terrible, not terribly stressful for me. Uh, I think everyone is, uh, you know, having disadvantages and sort of missing out on things. But mostly, I think the first year students are having the worst effect of this. Uh, it's, it's to be determined uh, how much it really affects the, their overall um, academic journey. But certainly, you know, the, the first year students have the social aspect that, that has been deprived for them. And I could see it uh, when June came and we had those first couple in class lessons the way the students there was an energy like a pent-up sort of we've been missing out and you know I'd, I'd make little jokes that weren't really that funny but got huge laughs uh, because I think they were ready for it they they wanted to laugh they wanted to uh, be involved and um, so I, and I felt bad when I saw it I, I was happy at the time but you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking they're really missing out and it's, it's sad and there's nothing to be done about it. But um, it, it wasn't just the first year students though. And in my school specifically, one thing that really attracted me about the school and this program is that um, they're, they have a global mindset, strong global mindset. And in that capacity, one, aspect of the program is all second year students in the fall semester do a study abroad. So um, that's a big draw for our school. And we have um, schools all around the world that we coordinate with. And um, so students, not 100%, I mean, there's always five or maybe 10 who for whatever reasons aren't able to go, but for the most part, each cohort uh, will spend a semester and study abroad. So those students um, are not able to do that. And right now, my school is still working out how to deal with that because we now have to create uh, classes for those students. Uh, we have to provide the education. And so um, that's a whole different presentation would take a while to explain what we're doing, um, but uh, as far as the students are really missing out, because that can't be postponed, um, in their third year they begin working on their senior theses, um, so it's not something you can just postpone the study abroad until spring of their junior year, it just doesn't work out that way. So uh, basically they'll just miss out on it, and uh, we'll try and alleviate it as much as we can and try and fill that gap, but it's simply impossible. But of course, we're, we're all suffering with that. Um, on a personal level, I mentioned I finished my PhD program, uh, had a really nice plan to go to Kentucky where my university is and attend the graduation ceremony, once in a lifetime you know, kind of event. Um, family was gonna be there, it's going to be a really nice weekend, nice experience, something to remember for my lifetime, um, and it's not possible. 
uh, I guess technically if things work out, you know, and adjust semi-normal, uh, I could attend next year's graduation in May, but it just really wouldn't be the same. Um, and it's not even something I'm considering. First of all, I personally, I don't think the pandemic, the uh, full effects are going to be um, dissipated until at least probably fall next year, maybe two years, who knows. But um, anyway, so everyone's been suffering a little bit. Uh, for me, as far as my teaching now in Japan, it hasn't been that bad. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot of support, a lot of conferences, presentations, um, a lot of email links being sent out. And so I think the support is there and, and it's just an adjustment period. Uh, the big talk now is that most schools want to go back to face to face in the fall. So perhaps, you know, it's really for not. Um, but if nothing else, there's some new skills learned. So um, that's really all I have. Um, if you have any questions, I'd love to uh, have further discussions. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but you can always uh, send me emails or I think post in the chat when you view the video and um, I'll get that at some point and can respond. So uh, again, thank you very much for joining. Uh, good luck to you all. And um, I want to leave one final thought is, uh, you know, remember to stay focused on the students and try and understand what they're missing out and um, try and and make up for that in any way possible. Um, but the, the main way is, you know, offer support beyond what you normally would think. Um, so just always have that support in the back of your mind and, and understand that um, the students going through this now um, have a deficit that hasn't been seen before. And so uh, we need to be there for them. All right. Thank you very much.